previously on My Fair Brady. You got some big issues with the church. Tell me where you want to get married then. The church is a mess. Adrian, do you mind seeing the shadows of the pews on the wall? I like it worn down. I love it gothic. We're using the church because that's what Adrian wants. Mom. I'm scared to tell my mom my dad got engaged. He told us he's now engaged. Aw, stop it, Mom. At my wedding, are you and Mom going to be decent? Worry you about. have nothing to worry about. I find it hard to trust him. So do you think I should do this parents thing? Just shove them in a room together and be like, no, I'm you guys to talk. My parents' marriage started getting rough when I started doing drugs and stuff. I guess maybe I've never just came out and told my parents that I really feel that I'm the reason that they were divorced. Oh no, Chris. <laughs> she told him dating really close, so on his knees he proposed. Now the wet on reality show, my fair lady. He knows the day is coming fast, once prenup said case hit the bus. Now she's going to kick his ass, my fair lady. Every day this couple fights, there's bound to be some stormy nights. VH1 has bought the rent, my fair lady. Um, Adrian, I'm gonna leave for about an hour. Bye, Mike. We'll see you in a bit. And I'll see you later. Ciao. So this morning, Adrian's mom, Christine, and I have the opportunity to go out to breakfast and to chat. I want to explore the idea of Christine and Rick getting together prior to the wedding, which I think uh, couldn't hurt. It uh, might be a very helpful thing. Welcome to the dive. I got a sense of last night at dinner that she's going to get nervous. Yeah. She better not be too fast a runner. <laughs> I feel sorry for you, too. Contrary to what most people believe, we get along fine, and we have a great deal of camaraderie. <sighs> so, um, have you and Adrian spoken since yesterday about getting together with her and Rick? I don't know, you know? I think it'd be good for Adrian. I mean, she's got, she had a, she's carrying a tremendous weight. This is an entire family. A large one that he was uh, attached, attached to, for a to long time. and then severed from. There came a point in which the relationship between Rick and, and Krista broke down, and Adrian thinks that she's at fault. You know how badly she feels. I guess maybe I've never just came out and told my parents that I really feel that I'm the reason that they were divorced. Oh no, Chris. <laughs> When you know things are falling apart, your kids are a certain age, you don't want to hurt them. And it still hurts them, no matter how old. Christine said that it's not Adrian's fault. It's hard for Adrian to see that from where she's at, and that's why it would be a good meeting for Adrian, because Adrian would get to purge to an extent her sense of guilt and shame. I can do it, believe it or not. I'll get along with them fine, you know? Mm -hmm. No problem. It's generous of you to make it happen or let it happen. Oh, I will. Sure I will. I'm a big girl. He's a big boy. Live and let live. You can sense it in her. It's a, it, it, it creates a discomfort, and it's something that she wish would go away. Do you suspect that tonight is this rendezvous? I suspect it is, because we can't do it tomorrow night. So you ready for that? What rendezvous? When leaving, I asked, are you ready for, you know, this rendezvous? She says, what rendezvous? And what is this? Well, no, the, not the rendezvous, but the thing with you and Rick. Not tonight. Not tonight, OK. Give me a month. Whew. She's just not ready. I think that was broadcast pretty loud and clear. Honey, you ready to eat cake? She's sleeping? She is, she's napping. So we're coming back to the house. Adrian is asleep, so I've got to get her up. We're going cake testing. Come on, we got to go. Don't jump all over my ass. Little did I know, Adrian's in a funky mood. Dude, I can't wait to wake you fresh up yeah. and be like, Hey, you gotta listen to what I gotta say. I got a million things to say, and I'm gonna say it. So sick of weddings. I've been dealing with parent issues. I've been dealing with planning for a wedding. What's next is all I gotta say is because I'm feeling really worn thin. Bye, mommy. Ciao. Harlem right here is the exit for East. And then you called and I was okay. right about it. Oh my gosh, she's gonna kill us all.
Adri, take it easy. What, Grandma? <laughs> Shut up! She's got a responsibility now as the driver. It's a really small one. Little did I know how difficult to write to the cake place would be. What, what does it say I have to turn off on? You've got to tell me. Maybe on to Marla Map. Right. Turn right on Hickory Street. Right. All right. Right on. Hey, Johnny Frotto. Well, I've been out of town. I'm in Joliet right now. How you doing? I'm doing. I'm in Joliet. Please. Hang on a second. I'm, I'm freaking, Let me freaking read out because she's driving and I have to be direction given. No, because everyone, you're talking, my grandma's <laughs> talking. This? And I'm like, Chris, shut up. Chris, blah, 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 blah on the phone and on top of the blah, blah, blah. He's talking Johnny, about me. I know every time you call, she's driving and I'm supposed to give directions and it's always at a critical moment. Shut up. Hello? Adrian, be quiet. He's right there. Damn it. Damn it. Right? We're going to be on this side of the street. Great okay. cakes. Things were a little shaky between Chris and I just because I guess I yelled at him in the car. But in my opinion, sweets and chocolate heal all. Wow, wow. smell that already. Yeah, I smell sugar. <laughs> how are you doing? Hi. Good, how are Hi, you? Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Beth. Hi, Beth, I'm one Chris. Of the owners. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Nice to meet you. All right, what we have today, you have white cake with strawberry mousse, red velvet cake with white chocolate mousse, chiffon cake with lemon mousse, our chocolate cake with raspberry mousse, banana cake with hazelnut mousse. Okay? Do you have any more flavors? <laughs> I have a lot. Most people don't eat that much cake, and by the time they get to the cake, they're drunk. So as long as the cake looks good to me, that's fine. I don't care about price or taste or nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You might want to have one layer be chocolate. You Why? can definitely have different I've never tiers. seen a chocolate wedding cake. And yeah. I yeah, they have chocolate and white a lot of times. Well, you know what? I hate discussing and arguing. I just want to get it done. So it's done. Chocolate and red velvet at the end. <laughs> this was the funnest one because we ate cake. <laughs> She had an energy to her that was non-cooperative. Though she was making a claim as though it was cooperative. You know, like, look at us, we're cooperating. Look, we got that done. It's like, yes, we did. You got it done. <laughs> Are you gonna do that whole smashing cake all over my dress thing? I can do it here. <laughs> you I hate you! <laughs> she just deserved it. Nose full of cake. I couldn't help myself! <laughs> Are you gonna run forever? <laughs> Coming up next. I hate you! She was not very happy. <laughs> it's nasty. I cooked up an intimate dinner at the Rialto. You are a friend, but you're also family. I have no doubts that she loves me. Are you gonna do that whole smashing cake all over my dress thing? I can do it here. <laughs> <laughs> you're an Chris and I were cake tasting, and Chris, he shoves cake all the way up my nose. He had to run like a little bitch. Such a little bitch. Are you gonna run forever? <laughs> it's nasty. I'm sorry. <laughs> she came after me like a snorting bull. <laughs> you can't get back, can you? <laughs> my Chanel glasses fell off. You're dying. She wasn't finding any humor in it. All that was important to her is to get even. <laughs> you got nowhere to go. Okay, give it to me. Go give ahead. Me that funk, that sweet, that. <laughs> I'll take one fun of it. All up your nose, bitch. <laughs> we have all the major things done except for the caterers. It wasn't as though there's a race to hire them. We've got to just get this going. <laughs> So you know for a fact we're not doing the mommy-daddy meeting? I don't know for a fact, Dad. I, I just know what your mom said. So um, have you and Adrian spoken since yesterday by getting together with her and Rick? I can do it. I get along with them fine, you know? And then when we were leaving the table, I said, so you ready for this little rendezvous? He says, you know that, that ain't gonna happen tonight. At first, I thought maybe there could be something to gain by bringing my parents together, but I realized there's no point in opening old wounds. I think my mother and I both need time for preparation. You got every right. I'm gonna take an educated guess that they so much don't wanna go there that they are going to ignore it all. It seems to me, though, by ignoring the issue, this is not the best way to deal with it. 
there can be a meeting before the re uh, rehearsal dinner and all that stuff, but it's just not going to happen right now. Adrian, I want to talk to you about something. If we were to have a meeting with your dad and I. I don't find it necessary for a meeting. I've been thinking about it, and I'm not so much worried about my parents being in the same room with each other. I know they can act cordial. My problem is my own issues. They run very deep. Adrian, I do not want to ever see you upset. Well, what the hell are you and dad going to have to talk about? What's a, no, I, I can talk <laughs> to your dad on the yeah, side. Yeah, but what are you, you going to say to him? Hey, Rick, how's the weather? No. What? I would just say, hi, Rick, how you doing? Happy engagement. <laughs> Life goes on, you know? Happy engagement. I'm, I'm glad you're happy. Now. <laughs> Whatever. OK. You know? But this is not about us. It's about you and Christopher. And you're so damn fortunate. And it's not your burden to bear, is what I've been trying to tell you all along. I love you. Too. More in life, you know that. You're bigger in life. You just punched me in my eye. <laughs> Here, I always ready with the Kleenex. My wife's mine. Look at all these women just <laughs> tearing up. No, we're just blowing our nose. It's, it's tears of joy, actually, because we're really strong Anne's women. Anne's got it, too. She's got the tears of joy. No, I'm just blowing my nose. Lion <laughs> queen. The only thing that I'm going to notice walking down that aisle is just Chris. That's what I'm there for. So if people are fighting, keep your feuds to yourself. I don't care. I'm here to marry my man. We have to be out of here in less than an hour. Where are we going? It's a secret. But you have to get ready. Well, thanks for just telling me. I cooked up uh, an intimate dinner at the Rialto, the site of our reception. Adrian knows nothing about it. No, I'm trying to find shoes. I didn't bring any shoes that match this. Adrian has been very stressed out with all the family issues, and I thought it would be appropriate to take her out to a special dinner. Honey. You look amazing. My shoes really don't go with my dress, but your shoes really don't go with your suit. <laughs> I'm so surprised. I'm like, oh my god. He's never done anything like this ever. Are you driving? I know. We're being driven. Oh, there's a limo here. OK, guess we're not driving. So where are we going? It's a bit of a surprise. Here, shut your eyes. Because I was a bitch to you today, are you going to punish me? <laughs> are you taking me up to Grand Street in Chicago to pimp me out? Coming up next. I absolutely have no doubt that the promise I can make you in three months, I could make you tonight. She is the one who loves me. Oh, jeez. Are you ready for that? Taking me up to Grand Street in Chicago to pimp me out. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to ask you to walk up a curb right there. You ready? Take my hand. So we're going out to um, to a special dinner. Adrian knows nothing about it, and um, so I'm surprising her. We're in the church. I want you to stand right here. We're in the church. Are you ready? Church! This is the church. Close. It's a Rialto. <laughs> <laughs> we walk in the doors, blindfold comes off. The Rialto is so beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my god. Since we're having our reception at the Rialto, I thought it would be a very unique place for us to experience this special dinner I want to have with Adrian. Oh, baby. Oh, my God. Can you, I can't wait until my reception's going to be so pretty, isn't it? And then I look down on the floor, and there's flower petals, and there's candles leading me down. And that is exactly what I wanted for our reception. This is all possible. Shut yep. up. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. The centerpiece is a possibility. The table look is a possibility. Oh my god. I love the chairs. I love this. I love the table. 
I love the centerpiece. Oh, look at all the black. Oh, it's a ribbon. <gasps> it's from Rizzy. Yes. This evening presented me an opportunity to actually set up a few of the vendors and try some of the items that we'll need for the wedding. You're sweet. I love you. This is above and beyond. I love you, baby. All the work I do on this wedding is rewarding because it brings a smile to Adrian's face. Do you know when I fell in love with you? Do you have any clue when that you brought? No, I really don't because I think that you were so quick to make an assessment that I thought no human being could possibly make as early as you were making it. Well, I distinctively remember day three in the surreal life. We arrived at the ranch and then you put your chaps and your cowboy suit on. Buttons of steel! I know, look at Damn. that! And that's when the lust poured over me. But when we went camping that night, you came in the tent all drunk and you were just snuggling in me all night. You know what I did? For the majority of the night, I stayed awake. I looked at you. I cried. I did. As much as I'd love to believe in that kind of romantic love, that love at first sight, in my world, I can get the hots immediately, but love is something that takes a long time to, um, to develop. I'm not wired like that. <laughs> You're crazy. I'm not crazy. I love you. I don't think I have a moment when I knew I was in love with you. It's just been, it's sort of like, imagine a ratchet. I just, there's these moments that are just- A ratchet. The way Chris told me he fell in love with me was so robotic. A ratchet. For every few days, one more click in the ratchet. Thanks, honey. So romantic. If you ever get old and crotchety on me, man, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> if I trace my love for you today back to the very beginning, you know, the first real click was when we had our date night. Peter Brady is my beloved roommate. Peter Brady, you were my favorite. Peter, Peter Pumpkin Eater, if she wants to eat you up, go for it. Then later in that evening when you, you did your little bow and curtsy and refrained from taking the advances of your date and looked over my way, it sort of melted me. I absolutely have no doubt that the promise I can make you in three months, I could make you tonight. What promise? The promise to forever be yours and want you as mine. Oh, Jesus. Are you ready for that? Mm -hmm. It's nice to hear Chris say nice things because Sometimes he forgets that, you know, I don't need dinners, I don't need champagnes, I don't need him to do amazing things like he did with the Rialto. But it's just the words. That's all I need. I have a lot of friends. And I have um, family, which I love. We show our love in a different sort of way. Yeah. <laughs> I have never lived my life where my family and their opinions, my friends have always been more important to me than family. Really? I really want and expect and know you are a friend, but you're also family. When Chris told me that I was his family, not only was I deeply touched and moved, but then it kind of sad, because I, I wish he had what I have, but now I can offer this to him. I will bear the fruit of thy loin. <laughs> <laughs> and our family will grow. Not for a while. Oh, can okay. I, you let go so I can please clear my face? <laughs> <laughs> Tonight was absolutely amazing. Chris went above and beyond. I have never, ever, ever had a date like that. It was way over the top, but it's something that I'll never forget. This is the most amazing night. She is the one who loves me. That I trust. Oh, baby, I love you. We're gonna have good sex tonight. You wanna f 
for a long time. Yeah. Next week on My Fair Brady. This night, I'm off to Vegas to have a bachelor and bachelorette party. Suggested that they come up for a drink. Excuse me, do not be a drink. I'm out of here. Come to my f***ing place and snap on me. Don't go off. Don't go off. I didn't want her attitude. So, damn it, I just sort of left pissed off at her. No, I'm done. You know, he's been a to me all day. Just being a child. Just grow up and let me go. I'm not going back. I'm done. All he does is disrespect me. Wait, I don't want you to leave, everybody. I don't know what room you're in. This is ruining my night. Oh my god, I touched your stomach and you farted. That's what happens. Dude. Do it again. Yourself, man. I think I just did. <laughs>